Hey everyone, thanks for joining in. How would you like to learn how to edit awesome night sky panoramas like this one that showcase the immense beauty and scale of the night sky? Well, in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you just that. So I hope you enjoy the tutorial. And don't forget, reach out to me with any questions or comments that you have. I'm here to help and I wanna make sure that you succeed in your photography. All right, so for this tutorial, I am using three pieces of software. I'm using number one, Adobe Bridge, which is seen here, and this is just the software I use for organizing my photos. Software number two, Photoshop. We're gonna edit and finish the photo in Photoshop. Software three, to stitch the images together, I found that Microsoft Image Composite Editor, or ICE, works phenomenally and it actually stitches the photos so cleanly compared to some shots that I try in Photoshop that actually fail to stitch. So for those users on Windows, Microsoft ICE is a free download. For Mac users, I hope maybe you could use your Windows emulator to try and download this software because it's free, does a great job at stitching. So when you're in the field, you're going to need a couple pieces of equipment. You're going to need some type of camera, a lens, and a tripod to keep the photos nice and stable because you're going to utilize long exposure. For the panorama that I shot here, I used a Nikon Z6 that's been modified to let in more hydrogen alpha light, which is the red emission nebula color that you see that really pops in the images of the night sky. 24 millimeter lens and from here you would attach this on a tripod and when you're in the field you want to go ahead and shoot the photos and manually move the camera. You want the photos to overlap by about 30 percent because you have to remember the software you're going to use is going to take those images and it's going to stack them side by side to create one large image. So you need to overlay them in the field by about 30% by just manually moving the photos one by one after you shoot. So for my setup, when I was at Craters of the Moon National Monument, I used this rig, 24 millimeter lens, and I did 15 second photos. So when each photo was done, I would use the level on the back of the camera screen and I would watch with live view and I would just manually move the camera down photo by photo taking the next image and then I would go the same direction and then I would go up and then I would do this for a total of 24 images because the Milky Way was arcing across the sky and Comet Neowise was still low on the horizon so I wanted to capture a long panorama view from a top inferno cone so we're going to dive into it here. I want to show you exactly what I mean by overlaying the images. Okay, now that we have the images after shooting them at night in the field from Craters of the Moon, we're going to open them up in Adobe Bridge scene here. Now remember, I mentioned that we shot each photo to overlap each by about 30%. So you want to make sure that you are overlapping the targets in your frame like you see here when we move down. You can see that Comet Neowise is in both of those frames so they will stitch together. Now you'd rather have a little bit more overlap than not enough. If you don't have enough overlap, the software will have such a hard time stitching the photos that you might actually even have gaps in the photos. So you can see all of these are gently overlapping just enough that we can create a big panorama with these images. Next step, select all these images and we're going to open them by hitting enter and that's going to open them in Adobe Photoshop. Alright, Adobe Photoshop is going to open them up in their Camera Raw plugin. So I'm going to click Control A on the keyboard to select all of the frames. And what you need to do with panoramas is you need to remove the vignetting. So vignetting is this dark outer portion from the camera lens because I shot very wide open at f1.4. So go into the lens correction tab. I'm going to also remove chromatic aberration and I'm going to enable a profile correction. 
I was shooting with a Rokinon lens, did a great job of capturing a lot of the night sky, and that f1.4 captures so much detail, it's amazing. So what I did was I increased the vignetting removal up to 200%. Standard is 100, but you have to remember that when you're stitching photos, it's going to use the middle portion of the photo, so I want to make sure that this image is uniform, and you saw all of these photos now have the vignetting removed on them because we're making one giant photograph uniformity is key with the single photos all right we're going to click open these images now and it's going to open them in photoshop Photoshop has finished opening all of these images and what I need to do is save all of these images with those settings as TIFF files and I'm going to pull them into our stitching software of choice which is Microsoft ICE. So to stitch all of these photos I'm going to go to File, Scripts, Image Processor to save them as TIFFs, make sure TIFF file is enabled, set Here's folder of choice to save. All right, it's going to save all of these photos, and then we can pull the tips into Microsoft Ice. Photoshop has just finished up saving all of our 24 images. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to open Microsoft Ice, which is right here, and I'm going to take the 24 TIFFs, drag them into Microsoft Ice. Microsoft Ice loaded the photos. The next step, all we have to do is click next and it's going to automatically stitch these files together and normally this is going to take a few minutes because this is a 24 image panorama and the files are pretty big all right sweet so microsoft ice just finished stitching these photos and now you can play with the different projection styles and see what looks cool. You can always be as unique as you want to with as many photos that you have. If you shot tons of photos for the panorama, you could even make an all sky, fish eye kind of view where it's basically you laying underneath the night sky, that appearance of the whole night sky you can create by taking full sky images to stitch together, which is cool. For this shot, I'm going to use the spherical projection method. It resembles as close to my experience under the night sky, minus the arcing, because the Milky Way doesn't arc across the night sky like this. That is just the way the software will align the photos, because the horizon is needed to be straightened and leveled. So that's why you see the Milky Way arcing in a lot of these photos. The Milky Way doesn't actually look arced like that in the night sky. It just looks kind of like a nice, slightly curved line across the horizon to horizon. So for this photo, I mentioned to you that if you do not overlay enough photos by about that 30%, sometimes you can accidentally miss a little bit of area, which is clearly what I did here. So if I zoom in, you guys can see that I accidentally forgot to capture and overlay enough between photos that I missed this little sequence in the sky. Very small portion, but it's enough that we can fix easily in Photoshop, but that's a good learning experience that always, always overlap the frames more than you think you do because I'm back at home right now and I can't go back out and shoot the same exact scene same exact conditions so when in doubt 
take more images than you feel like you need with panoramas because you might not get the opportunity to fix that later in post-processing with any errors that you missed from shooting in the field. All right, so for me, next up on this one, I am going to just kind of move around a little bit. You can see you can play with the projection and that sort of thing, but I want it to be nice and level, so I'm just gonna do this auto orientation, and then I'm gonna click next, and it will project the panorama, and then we can crop on the image itself, and then pull it into Photoshop to edit. So I'm just gonna crop in a little bit on these edges and just get enough meat on the image that we can edit in Photoshop. So you can see with that projection, you start to get these very long stretched out stars due to the projection. So I'm just going to crop down a little bit and try to keep the stars pinpoint. And I might do something along the lines of this and then click next. So that is our crop, it looks good, finished, and we'll move on to the next step. You need to save this as a high quality Adobe Photoshop image. I wanna do the composite only, and I'm gonna export this to my desktop, I'm gonna call this the Tutorial Pano. I'm gonna click save, and it's gonna take a little bit because this is again a large file, and we'll come back as soon as this is done saving. Alrighty, sweet. Microsoft Ice just finished saving the panorama. We're going to take that file and we're going to open it now in Photoshop. Alrighty, so as I noted, overlapping the frames as much as you can, more so than you think you need to do in the field, is important because you can run into instances like this that you miss a little portion of the sky, but with digital editing, we can actually fix this little portion and make it um, look pretty seamless as well. But here's our image. We can kind of inspect around. First thing I want to do is I want to crop this to a standard panorama printing size, which is going to be a ratio of one on the height to a width of three. So a one to three ratio, which means for this image, I want to crop it to make it so it is 75 inches long by 25 inches high. So I set our ratio to 75 up here inches by 25 and I'm going to click on the image so I can move the crop and I think right up here looks good and we'll click OK. Alright, so I want to next fill in this void. So I'm going to duplicate this layer by clicking the image and dragging it down to the duplicate icon down at the bottom or you can hit Control J if you are on Windows. Control J right now, you just see it made a duplicate copy. So that's also a duplicate copy button click for you guys. So I'm gonna delete that because we don't need it. So to patch this area, I'm gonna use the stamp tool. You pull that up by hitting S. I clicked S right here and I am going to move and I want to paint in these outer areas of the night sky to fill in that void. So hitting S for the stamp tool, and then you need to click Alt on the area that you want to select in the night sky to then paint into that area. So if I click right here by holding Alt and then left click, I can go ahead and I can paint in that area and try to make it look pretty normal because I unfortunately didn't shoot enough images in the field. Okay, so I'm low enough on this horizon. I need to zoom in and I want to select a portion of the mountain here and I want to just kind of overlay that right over this way as 
best as I can to kind of make it look flat, which is kind of takes a little trial and error. And something like that, and then we can fix that star. Alright, and I'll just overlay this a little bit. Alright, so that fixes the sky portion of it. Next, I'm going to click Z, zoom out a little bit, and I want to paint with that stamp tool again, and I want to fix this ground, kind of just like I did for the sky. So I'm just going to paint in to the side of it. Do the same for the other side. And to make the brush smaller, hold down Alt, and I'm holding the right button on the mouse, and I'm dragging the mouse left and right. And you can see that it changes the size of the brush pretty quickly, and it makes it a little bit easier for me to fine tune and paint in these areas on the ground. Alrighty, oh, I missed one little spot at that bottom. Okay, so we zoomed out, and as if I didn't goof up the shot in the field, we fixed that little portion from me not overlaying enough images in the field. So it can happen, but just realize that with software now, you can fix those little mistakes to still recover an amazing image right here because that would be a total sad thing if I wasn't able to recover that little portion. Okay, so now that we have a whole, uniform, awesome panorama, now we can treat it as one image because now, as you see, it is one large image of the night sky. A huge, huge field of view of the comet over here, just hanging out, setting above the mountains. I mean, it's just, that's beautiful, unreal. You have air glow, this green in the night sky, that's from oxygen molecules in the upper atmosphere, giving off radiation that they soaked up from absorbing sunlight in the day, and they give off that radiation in the form of light that the camera can pick up very well, but the human eye can't see that at night. We have a few little light domes on the horizon there. You see some red hydrogen nebulosity. There's Rho Ophiuchus. We have the Lagoon Nebula, the Trifid Nebula, and a lot of other hydrogen alpha regions here, and especially up here in the North American Nebula region, and the Seder region, the Butterfly Nebula right up here. These beautiful hydrogen alpha regions are picked up by a modified camera. So the modified camera allows that red hydrogen wavelength to record on the sensor but stock cameras, the filters actually block that light. So with this one, we can actually enhance that red when we're ready to edit. But one last little cool thing, the Andromeda Galaxy. Look at that, another galaxy in a photo of our galaxy. Awesome, so cool. All right, let's get down to the meat and potatoes of it. So I want to edit this sky separate from the ground. So for me to do that, I'm gonna use the magic wand by clicking W on the keyboard and I'm going to select the ground and I want to pull that as a separate layer so if I hold and just go across the ground it's gonna pick those dark pixel values for me and I'm gonna make some fine tune adjustments to try to pull up some of those mountains into the image as well All right. And with this, you saw it took a little bit time to load when I was selecting the magic wand. So now that we have our crop set, you can reduce the image size to make it easier for your computer to process. So I'm gonna turn it to a little bit smaller of a file by holding Control, Alt, I, 
and I want to take this image size and I just want to reduce it to let's say uh, 60 inches by 20. That'll make it a little bit quicker on the computer to save the file and to edit and of course that is going to be an amazing panorama to print. All right, now that our file size is saved, I am going to reselect this area of the ground. And you saw it was a little bit quicker to grab that just because the file size was a little bit smaller, so it's a little bit easier for the computer to grab. All right, so I need to zoom in and I want to select the mountains here in the background. So I'm going to hold Alt, right click on the mouse, drag the mouse to the left and I'm going to hold and drag across the mountains to select that darkness pixel range and I will fine tune it from there. Oh, oh maybe just this little portion here. Okay, so I'm just going to zoom in and I want to make sure that pretty much all the mountain is segmented from the sky, which it is looking good. We have the bushes there, Okay, a little bit. Maybe remove some of that. To deselect, you would hold the Alt key, and you can see that the little um, symbol inside the circle now turned to a negative sign, which means that it's going to remove that from the mask. When you let up, it's positive, meaning that it's going to add to the mask. So I held down Alt and I clicked that top of the bush to remove some of that from the mask. All right, it looks like I'm gonna add some more of this to the mask of this mountain range in the background. And that is looking pretty, pretty good. All right. Cool. All right, we have the ground selected. I want to feather this selection. Feathering is going to create a soft edge when we save it. So I'm going to hold Shift, F6, and I want to turn that feather radius into one pixel. Now it just feathered the border, which just means it's kind of a, a blended gradient. And I'm going to click Control C and then Control V. And you see over here, it just made a new layer that is the layer of the ground so it's a separate selected layer now and from here I want to go back to one of my main images on the layer tab here and I'm going to use the TK action panel which is a plugin that you can order online and it does a great job for selecting different color and tonal value ranges so you can make cool luminosity masks which for me, I want to click this mid-tones 5, and if you do not have this panel, don't fret. What you always can do is you always can make a curves or levels adjustment in Photoshop by clicking, you know, Control M for curves, or if you wanted to uh, darken this, you could pull down on this area here, and you can kind of add contrast by making a little S curve by increasing the brightness on the left is darkness. So you saw when I pulled down that darkened the sky. When I ro rose this up, when I rose this up, you can see that it's increasing the brightness because this is the brighter portion of the pixel values. So if I click OK on that, and then if I drag that layer up above this one, you'll see that that ground then does not become uh, changed, which is cool. Oh wait, no, oh, yeah it is. Okay. All right, so with that ground on a layer that is above the curves adjustment layer that we just did, you can see that the ground does not get adjusted, so only the sky. So if I click this little eye on and off, you can see that only the sky is being adjusted here. So that was just a quick tip for those that do not have the TK action panel here. So I'm gonna go back up to here and I want to select the midtones in the image, and that's going to be the majority of the night sky. And I like using this midtones 5 mask. 
and it's going to make a selection and I'm going to create a curves level adjustment now that I have the Midtones 5 selected I'm going to capture the curves and adjust them now that I selected the Midtones I want to turn that into a curves adjustment layer up here and I want to do just what I did before but I'm going to drag this down a little bit and just darken it to kind of what it was to my eye. I mean it was it was really dark out that night and just add a little bit of brightness to the image you know something like that to just bring in a little bit of contrast to the image and as you can see all of a sudden oh wait it looks like that's also darkening the mountains. That's something that maybe we didn't want to do if we want to keep the foreground unadjusted. So if you remember, the layer of your layers themselves are going from the bottom to the top. So this curves is above the ground that we selected. So we need to move this down. And you can see now the mountains are unadjusted, which is good. Okay. So I want to make a levels layer and I want to color balance the night sky. So up here where there's really no color, I'm going to click this set gray point and I'm going to click just in the area of blank sky. And you can see when zooming out, now we have a pretty darn good color balanced image. We removed a little bit of that orange hue that was in the night sky, but we kept this beautiful green air glow, and you can start seeing some of the red nebulosity pop. Alright, so next up on my agenda, I want to increase the saturation a little bit. So I'm going to go back, select the midtones again, and I want to make a vibrance layer adjustment that's only going to change the vibrance and saturation of the midtones. So if we just zoom in, we go to increase the vibrance. You can see if you go 100%, you're obviously going to be adding a lot of color to the areas of midtone tonal range. I'm obviously going to back this off a little bit to make it look a little bit more natural. Something maybe along the lines of plus 30 and you can see you know just a little bit adds a lot of punch obviously when you're doing uh, changes to the saturation so you can click this on and off and see the changes that you made so something like that looks okay I don't like how yellow this light pollution is coming in so the benefit of this awesome masking is you can click on that layer mask I can click the brush tool by clicking B and I can increase the brush size, I could change the opacity to say 75%, and I can actually remove that gradient a little bit by darkening it. So I'm going to paint over that a few times to remove some of that saturation adjustment that we just did. So that, that's one of the powerful tools with the masking. So I'm going to go back, and you can see if I zoom in, if I go to before and after, you can see that I removed a good bit of that yellow light pollution extra vibrance because it just was a little bit too yellow for my taste. So when I blink that on and off, you can see that we didn't remove much of the air glow color. We just removed the orange light pollution glow while keeping the rest of the colors in the night sky as they should be. Sweet, this is looking so cool. All right, so next up, what I want to do is I want to selectively increase the red emission nebulae color. So one great way to do that is you can click the midtones again, or you can just create a selective color adjustment layer. So we can do that by going to this yin and yang little button down at the bottom and we can click selective color. That's going to make a selective color mask so we can make adjustments and for those reds in the emission nebulae we can increase the magenta. If you watch, 
I put that to 100%. And now look, you can see that that red really starts to pop in the emission nebulae. And you can remove the cyan. And that's going to make it even pop a lot more. And you can really see that, of course, it's adjusting everything because we didn't remove and mask out anything yet. So you can see that it really added a lot of red to the red areas, but it also added a lot of discoloration to the other colors in the image. So what we can do is we can click on that layer and we can turn that whole layer black with the opacity 100%. I'm going to paint across that image with the brush tool and it is going to remove that adjustment we just did and I am going to selectively go back and I'm going to paint with that brush tool. I'm going to make the brush tool a little bit smaller and I'm going to turn the color to white because we need that white to reveal the red. So if you look now how much that red pops. That's a North American nebula, beautiful emission nebula in the night sky. And let's do the same for this area around the star called Seder. And you can see that that red really starts to come in when you selectively brush in that adjustment. So again, showcasing the power of using layers and masking in Photoshop. There's a little emission nebula here. We're going to paint that increase saturation in. There's one here it looked like and there's a few here and that looks awesome. Oh, it looks like there's one hiding out right there. That's awesome. Maybe paint something in there. Make the breast a little bit smaller. Alright, so let's go along the Milky Way see if there's any other emission nebulae that we want to selectively increase saturation for. And boom, look, we have these couple nebulae up here so I'm just going to paint in I'm going to reduce the opacity to 50% by hitting the 5 on my keyboard here. And just paint in on the Lagoon Nebula. I'm going to paint in here on the Triffid Nebula. And I need to go over to this portion of the sky. And I'm going to paint in this area of emission nebulae that's just this diffuse, massive emission nebulae that's right here above Row of Fuchsius. And again, paint in Row of Fuchsius Red. All right, so if you zoom out, you can see your handiwork in action. You can turn on and off. You can see now those emission nebulae just pop a little bit more. You know, it's amazing what the, the modified cameras can do. It's, it's pretty darn cool. Awesome, this thing is coming along beautifully. And I think from here, I'm going to image, duplicate the image, because the next step I like doing for my panoramas, once I made those adjustments, I like to reduce the star brightness in the background. And one way to do that is using an action panel called the Astronomy Tools Action Kit. And that has a great action for making the stars smaller right here in your image. And what I want to do is I can turn all of these layers down to one flattened image. And I'm going to now duplicate this layer just so I can have some flexibility with changing the opacity of this. So if you click make stars smaller, it's going to run through an action and it's going to select the stars in your image and it's going to reduce their brightness which will make the Milky Way become more of the central focus of the image and just give you a little bit different touch when, when editing. Alright, now you can see that we reduced some of the brightness of the stars. If you blink on and off, you can see that it dimmed some of those, but if you give it another iteration, it will really reduce the stars even more so than that first attempt. And then, if necessary, you can reduce the opacity of that layer that we made to make it a little bit more balanced and neutral looking and not too over edited. So if we click on and off, you really can start seeing how the Milky Way starts to become the focus of the image now that some of the dimmer stars in the photograph 
have been selected and decreased in brightness. Look at the comet. Oh my gosh, so cool. It's just seeing it pop now. All right. And you can adjust the opacity. Say if you didn't want it that much, you can obviously bring it back in to put in some of the stars a little bit more. So something like that looks pretty cool, I think. And this flaring from the lens around planet Jupiter, and that is Saturn, you can fix as well by taking your stamp tool and clicking on the sky, kind of like we did to fix the image, um, the portion that I didn't get. And you can paint in here and remove the uh, kind of that flaring on the image a little bit around Jupiter. So that removed it just a little bit. Makes it a little less obvious. All right, so that's looking good. I'm going to flatten this image. And from here, I'm going to use that stamp tool again to finish off that adjustment around Jupiter. And you should see it kind of goes away a little bit more. Just so that flaring isn't as obvious. Okay, if you zoom out, there you go. A little bit cleaner. And I think I just want to increase the brightness of the image. The dark darkness looks pretty darn cool right here. So to do that, we can just create a duplicate layer and give it again a nice adjustment with levels. And with levels, I just want to adjust it and increase the brightness by taking the midpoint and raising it maybe to something about like that. Now that will give it a final brightness. Usually for the sky background, I try to put my RGB levels to usually about 30 to 25. And because remember, pure black is going to be zero. So like the ground down here is pretty darn black. So it's, it's closer to zero on that scale. So for the night sky to show a lot of the detail, I try to keep it around 30 to 25. So I could darken this a little more, but I really like the way this one is looking with the air glow, and I'm pretty darn happy with it as of now. So my last step is to save this as a small JPEG so I can share it online. I can click flatten the image first, and then I need to reduce the image size by clicking Control alt i and I want to turn that image into, say, a 10-inch by 3-inch, just a very small image for saving and sharing on my phone for web. And to save this as a JPEG, you can click File, Save As. You can turn this into JPEG and save it to the desktop and the folder that you guys used. I'm gonna turn it up to a maximum of 12 on the quality scale and you can pull it up in that folder. And here is that JPEG. So here is that final image, Comet Neowise, Arcing Milky Way, beautiful air glow, Andromeda Galaxy there as well. So cool, Hydrogen Alpha is blowing off the charts on that image because the modified camera, but it's just a beautiful scene, something that inspires me to keep getting outside and enjoying the night sky but I hope this tutorial was helpful for you guys. I enjoy sharing the knowledge and helping folks get new levels on their photography and growing and improving. If you guys have any questions, shoot me an email, drop me a comment. I'm here to help, but thank you for watching and I hope it's been worth your time to learn some new tips and tricks in software.